This short video aims to explain the main difference between two airline business models, low-cost model versus full-service carrier model. As a background, we can say that the airline history has uh, 100 years. At the beginning, we had uh, what we can call normal airlines because we, we, were, we were having just one type of airlines. But at some point uh, in the late 80s, appeared something called deregulation. So some of the rules were applied for the airlines were removed and then low-cost carriers appeared. So if we have full service carriers, as a instance, we could have Turkish Airlines, we could have British Airways, and we could have low-cost carriers, which we can have EasyJet, or Pegasus Airlines. So on these presentations, we are going to look at the features of these low-cost airlines versus the full-service carriers. Let's start. Low-cost airlines tend to use a standard fleet. It means they tend to have one single aircraft type, which generally is an Airbus 320 or a Boeing 737. What are the advantages of having one standard fleet? Well, they will have lower training. Basically, if I have different uh, aircraft types, I have to train pilots and technicians on different aircraft types. If I have only one, then I have only one aircraft type training. Maintenance plays a, a saving role because I have to have less type of spare parts. I have more purchasing power. I mean, when I am negotiating with the manufacturer to buy new aircraft, if I'm going to buy a single aircraft type, I'm going to have a larger volume. So then it means that I am able to get lower discounts. And during the operations, I will have more flexibility. Imagine that one aircraft gets uh, stuck in one airport, then it's easy to be replaced by another one because it's going to be exactly the same size. Locust airlines tend to use secondary airports, which are not the main airports of the city. And this has some advantages. For instance, very often they get less uh, airport fees. Those airports tend to be less congested, so then they don't have uh, problems about waiting times as in big airports. And those airports, very often they try to attract airlines uh, as low cost, and they are willing to pay marketing support when you launch a new route, when you start a new base, uh, and so on. Another local, low cost feature is rapid turnaround. So they like to arrive to the airport and depart as soon as possible, the time between arriving and departing. This has some advantages. And if the aircraft is less time on the ground, it means that it stays more time on the air, so more flying hours, which leads to higher aircraft utilization, which means in reduction in cost. If we look at history of airlines 20 years ago, airlines were selling mainly most of the tickets at travel agencies. 15 years ago, they started to sell the tickets uh, at the telephone. And 10 years ago, it was more and more often to sell the tickets online. So these airlines have been the first ones selling most of the tickets uh, online. It has some advantages, which is not paying the travel agency commissions, to have less call center agents because people do the booking themselves, and having a direct course, uh, contact with the passenger. So I don't have anybody else talking to the passenger but me directly. Other features that uh, more, more low cost but also traditional airlines, full service cars are doing is promoting web checking. So instead of sending people to the airport to do the uh, manual check-in, I can do it from my office, from home, uh, that check-in. So what are some of the advantages? Well, I have to have less staff at the airport. I have to use less counters 
which normally they are being rented from the airport, and I'm giving more passenger convenience. I mean, I can just prepare my, my check-in at home, at the office, or while commuting to the airport. Other feature started by low-cost carriers is to charge for baggage. In the past, you could check in as many baggage as well, as many not, but a couple of luggages. But low-cost carriers said, okay, wait a minute, I'll give you small luggage, but the rest you have to pay if you want to transport. So what are the advantages? Well, by doing that, they are generating some more revenue, which we call ancillary revenue. Normally we call the ticket revenue, and ancillary revenue is any revenue coming from different sources to the ticket. I have less weight on the aircraft, which is going to have an implication on less fuel consumption. I have more web checking that we saw before, because people don't need to go with the luggage to check in, so I just receive my check-in on my mobile or internet and that's enough. We have also some disadvantage, which uh, is to having more luggage on board, which sometimes it creates some uh, lack of space and maybe small delays or slower boarding. Another feature started by the low-cost carriers was to have free seating, which is, means you go in and you sit in the first seat available that you find. Some of the advantages is like there is an incentive to be earlier and we tend to get faster turnaround times of the aircraft. There is also disadvantages because some passengers will like to secure their seats so then we are not providing the good service to those passengers. And we are getting some potential revenue so then what has happened in here is like some of the locals they have adjusted their free seating policy. So now they give the opportunity for some of those passengers to uh, book their seats and at the same time to generate some revenue. Other way uh, low-cost carriers reduce the cost is by having multi-job functions. What does it mean? Well, we could have like uh, the cabin crew checking tickets, so you don't have two type of people. We have cabin crew cleaning the aircraft, or we could even have the pilots doing visual checks around the aircraft after one flight. What is the result? Basically, lower cost. And there are other uh, features as well as, uh, for instance, could be to charge for everything you serve on board, so I don't give you a foot on board. If you want to buy, is, uh, you buy it. Some airlines avoid air bridges, so then you have to walk from the aircraft to the terminal, and they pay less fee to the airports. They tend to fly point to point, which is like a more simple operation, so that leads to reduced in cost. They very often adjust the amount of fuel put on board, so then they minimize the weight in order to optimize the fuel consumption. And also, sometimes they do the route planning. I mean, uh, what they do is, when I am arriving to one airport, I'm doing the route planning for the next flight. So there is a, a way to save time. So as a summary of the low-cost carrier versus full-service carriers, we can say that they appear after the regulation, that they offer, offer a basic service, and then if you want something else or something extra, you have to pay for it. And they aim all the time to have the simple possible operation, because simplicity is going to lead to lower cost 